brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and end and dandruff treatment shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a young man whose face you have come to know and look for and love on the Steve Allen Show and who is at present starring in Romanoff and Juliet, the big Broadway hit, Mr. Tom Poston. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the first, Broadway's first lady of the Fourth Estate, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Sold me over so I forgot my introduction that I had all lined up. But at any rate, you'll be very happy to know that we have back on the panel a gentleman who is not only polished and urbane, but a wonderful game player, and it's always a pleasure to have him on, Martin Gable. As you know, the greatness of America is made up of many peoples from many lands. Tonight, we have South Africa's gift to Eastern Daylight, Central Standard, Mountain and Pacific Coast Time, Mr. John Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. All this fine warmth which we've shared among ourselves, the panel and the moderator herewith, will we trust be used to good effect when we present them with some occupations which will probably confound them and most certainly frustrate them for a while. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just... ...meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Yeah. Donald E. Gray. Right, sir? <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Gray? Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. Well, it's nice to have you here with us, Mr. Gray, the panel. Panel, Mr. Gray, will you join yes. me over here, please? Mr. Gray, do you know how we keep score? Yes. In that event, let's let the people at home, and those who are here with us in the theater in the audience, know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mr. Gray is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Gray, whatever it is that you do in Flint, Michigan, could you do it in Brooklyn, New York? Yes. Could anyone on this panel with a reasonable amount of training do it, do you think? Yes. But it would be funny if we did, huh? No. No? <laughs> No, actually, I'd have to give you a no. It wouldn't be right. funny. If you had a reasonable amount of training and were doing it, it wouldn't be funny. That would make it one down and nine to go, okay. Mr. Gable. Is it a service that you perform rather than a product that's uh, central to your work? Yes. Um, is it something that would be more suitable for me, that service, than, say, Dorothy? No. <clears throat> John is uncertain. More suitable. No, I think we'd have to say no to that, too. Uh, Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. John, uh, may, we, uh, uh, may we clarify this? I is this more suitable for Martin to receive or to perform? <laughs> well, if I may say what I meant, uh, I meant receive. Oh, is that what you meant, too, John? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mrs. <Okay>. Gable. <laughs> Do people come to you for your services? Yes. Do you work indoors? Yes. Uh, is it a large building that you work in? What do you mean by large? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean anything bigger than two stories. No. It's not bigger than two stories. There you go. That makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Poston. 
May we assume that your services are uh, directed more for the ladies than for the gentlemen? No. That makes it two to four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you ever deal with animals or children? Oh! No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Gable. Do people come to you for your services? Yes. yes. Is the fact, am I right in thinking that the size of the building you work in is not Germain to your work. Yes, you are right in thinking that. Arlene, <laughs> just to square that away. He doesn't look German. <laughs> oh, oh no. Arlene. Oh, that's in I'll memory see of you Bennett. later. Yes, that was for Bennett. That's for Bennett, sir, wherever he is. Uh, <laughs> I'm right also in thinking there's no product connected with what you do. Yeah. Uh, is your work more to do with the mental effect that you have on your clients than in anything physical you do to them? No. Well, now, wait a minute. We've got a small thing. Rephrase that question again, if you will. Uh, may I phrase it in order to get a yes, John? <laughs> yes, you may try. <laughs> uh, is your work, while it may have uh, a certain mental aspects to it, is it uh, equally involved with the physical uh, aspects of your client's problem? I Sorry, but I know what he means. <laughs> Martin, your questions are getting as complicated as John's explanations. <laughs> I'll speak to you later, Ollie. <laughs> you wouldn't like to withdraw that question, would you, Mr. Cable? I'm always eager to please, John. <laughs> I wish you'd withdraw that. Well, I tell you, it's very difficult to answer it for you right. because both elements are involved. Yeah. In, in, in other words, I, I, I may assume that your work is both mental and physical. Yes. Oh, its effect yeah. is both mental and physical. Its effect, it, right. yes. It, okay. would say its that effect it is have both mental and physical. Purpose, right. say. Uh, <laughs> do you need uh, higher training for what you do? Do you have specific reference now to graduate degree as a necessary requisite? Certainly not, John. I'm not snobbish enough to think that training involves a degree necessarily. Well, then there is Besides, a Besides, I know my way around this program. Yes, you got <laughs> it. You got it later. <laughs> Certainly a degree of training of a special character would be most uh, necessary. Do you touch the people who come to you? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. Seven uh -huh. down and three to go, Mr. Poston. May I ask if uh, you deal with people who come to see you? Yes. You remain in one place? Yes. Do they come to you voluntarily? Yes. Are they made happier by having visited you? Yes. We Much like happier. to we, we like to think so. Is are you in a, a private business, sir, as opposed to a public service business? Uh, well, that's that's a strange question, isn't it? Yes, I would. Are you you are salaried? Yes. And it is nonprofit. It's nonprofit. Nonprofit. Is it? Uh, does it have anything to do with uh, government? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Does it have anything to do with either charity or education? Yes. Uh, does it have anything to do with education? Yes. Do the people who come to see you get advice or instruction from you? Yes. Are you connected with uh, a college or university? No. That makes it nine down and one to go, Mr. Gable. Does the noble and sacred institution of marriage have anything to do with your work? Yes. Do you give marriage counseling of, of any sort whatsoever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was delightful. Martin has learned his way around this show with a vengeance, I must say. Dorothy, did you? I'm going to Well, I just thought card. maybe he was a minister. No, actually, I think if you'd had another question or two now, you'd have nailed it, because Mr. Gray teaches a course for expect, expectant parents. He has, uh, yes, Dorothy. In that case, John, I think it's high time he had something to do with children and animals. Well, they, the children have no direct contact with them. I know, I was only joking. If they, everything they works, there. they're there, <laughs> but they're, they're not participating, shall we say. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> to explain things fully, uh, Mr. Gray is with the...
Clara Elizabeth Fund, is that right? He has a background in education, has an MA in the field of, a special field of education, and I dare say he's one of the most popular men in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> popular with us, too. You stuck the panel, and thanks very much for being our guest. Nice to see you. All right, panel, it was very close, I think, as I said, you'd have had it in another question or two. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Ray V. Vista? Vista. Is it um, Miss or Mrs. Vista? Mrs. Mrs. Beaster, and where are you from? Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Mrs. Beaster, the panel. Panel, Mrs. Beaster, now will you join me over here? <coughs> Mrs. Beaster, do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Well, that's fine. Then let's let everybody except our friends on the panel know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Bista is salaried, and Martin, you just run it all over this show, so you start things off. Mrs. Bista, uh, am I right in thinking that you are not a marriage counselor? You are right. Yes. Uh, you're from Drexel Hill, which is near Philadelphia. That's right. Uh, is it possible? Uh, I come from there, too. It's a great city, whoever was applauding. Uh, is it possible that your work could be done in a place other than Drexel Hill? Oh, yes. Uh, is it, is it, is there a service connected with what you do? Is there what? A service rather than a yes. product. Oh, yes. Well, I, now here again, we can mislead you. This, there is a service. It's difficult to answer your question fully when you have really two parts to it. So, but on the first part of your question, is there, there a, is a service, service connected? Yes. The yes. answer would be yes. Uh, would I be right in saying there was no product connected with, with what you do? Uh, that is to say, you don't sell anything. Uh, we'll just leave the first. Oh. The, the, would you be right in saying there was no product connected? You'd get a no on You're that. You're surrounding just me this evening. Cut it right off there. That makes it one down to nine to go. Miss Arlene Francis. Uh, Mrs. Bister, is this a product that can be used by men and women? Yes. Is it useful? <laughs> <laughs> is it useful? Very. Uh, would it be found in the home? Yes. Uh, would it be found on the first floor of a home? Good. <laughs> Uh, is it something that would uh, be seen by anyone that might come into the house? Could? Could be, yeah. I mean, it isn't something that you necessarily keep in a closet or a drawer. No. <laughs> is it larger than Steve Allen's bread box? No. 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 <laughs> Two down at eight to go, Mr. Poston. What do you do, Mrs. Bister? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Just a plain yes or no will be enough. <laughs> is one likely to see this when entering uh, the home where it is kept? Is, is one likely to see it when yes. entering a home? I think we'd have to give a no to that, Mr. Beaster. No. Yes, we'd have to give you a no on that. That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is this anything that you would be likely to see uh, when a party was going on? More often... <laughs> Then if a party you wasn't could. going on. You could. Is it kind of a fun product as well as useful? <laughs> well, now, wait, are, are you well, mean here any... a funny, peculiar Oh, no, product? no, no. I just oh. mean, the, does it add to the gaiety? <laughs> it's been known to add to the gaiety more than somewhat on occasion, yes. Uh, is there anything liquid about this? <laughs> That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Dorothy's line of questioning led me to believe she knew where she was going. That me. So now I'm hung. Um, is this product that, that you uh, have, do the people bring it to you for alteration or repair rather than you sell it to them? <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Is this product something you can hold in your hand? You could. Yes. Uh-huh. Does it ever touch the person? I mean, is it ever, is it when it is used, does the person have to touch it in some way? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Is, and it is solid? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, is it some, <laughs> somebody had it solid once and it fell apart, I think, from the... <laughs> Shh. Shh. Uh, sh 
<laughs> is, it, uh, is it anything that is consumed? No. No. That makes it six down and four to go. Mr. Poston, I'm going to give you one minute more on this one. Uh, is this product likely, more likely to be found in one part of the house as opposed to the other? No. That may makes it seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. May we have a conference, You John? may have ten seconds I'm for a conference. I'm inclined to, to want to consult Martin, because I feel he's brainier than I am this evening, particularly. Dorothy. Uh, I, 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 I go along with that. Could it be some kind of an animal that's useful when she deals with it, but wouldn't it be around the house? Yeah, like a trained... Well, like a dog, mouse or something? Or a trained mouse. Well, I mean, I'm not... Uh, I'm In my opinion, it could be that, yes. All right. The uh, conference period is up, Mr. Do you deal with anything that is or ever has been alive? No. No. That makes it uh, eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Isn't that minute up, John? <laughs> yeah, that minute's about up. You want to ask one? Because I'll ring the towel in if you'd uh, like me to. I love Drexel Hill. It's beautiful there. Drexel Hill it is. That's the right good answer. Now, actually, you weren't even close, and this is going to surprise you a bit. You see... Mrs. Beaster is the superintendent of the United States Mint in Philadelphia. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mrs. Beaster. Nice to have you here. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. Now we come to the spe special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which I ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, you go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time, moving clockwise, and let's begin with Arlene Francis. Well, that reception is usually accorded to people that are pretty dazzling in the entertainment business, so I'm going to take a chance that that's it and ask you if you are a performer performing in the East at the present time. Yes, I am. Mr. Poston? <laughs> Should be performing in the South. Yes. Are you in uh, motion pictures? Not at the present. But I would think, to be completely fair, we would have to say that our guest is in motion pictures, if not presently making a picture. Miss Kilgallen? Thank you. Are you presently employed either in the theater or in a nightclub or supper club work here in New York? Well, I'm employed around here, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Are you making Gable? a summer tour in one of the summer theaters? Well, I, let, let's put it that I'm making a summer tour. No, well, actually, we've got a splendid chance to give Martin a nice big fat no, which I intend to do right now. <laughs> Boom! Not in summer theater, Miss Francis. Do you sing? Sometimes. <laughs> Mr. Poston. Have you currently been, uh, uh, recently been in, uh, engaged in doing a uh, uh, musical on Broadway? Well, I go in the stage entrance on Broadway, yes. Well, now, wait a minute. Here again, I think we've got a chance to give a no. Your question was specifically engaged in doing a musical on Broadway. Is that right? I see. Thank you, John. That's I, I, very pleasant. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, she said she goes on the stage entrance. She's peering around. She's peering around. Broadway. Right. She's doing a summer I, I'm sorry to seem to be talking to myself, yes, but... Is. She said John said uh, no. Well, we all do it one time or another. <laughs> Are you blonde? Am I what? <laughs> blonde. Are you fair-haired? <laughs> fair-haired, no. That's three down. I'm my, I'm my father's fair-haired girl, though. Oh. Is that three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. Are you a comedian <laughs> rather than a tragedian? <laughs> I'm beginning to think I'm a comedian, yes. <laughs> but just so that you're not misled, you'll get a no for that, too. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, are you singing at the present time in one of the big supper clubs here in New York? Well, yes, I am. Oh. Boston? Is it, uh, is it the Copacabana? 
No, it isn't. That's five down and five. Yes, it is. Now tell the truth. <laughs> no, it isn't. Are you Catherine Grayson? Yes, I am. Uh, is it? And I think so that we don't leave you in the dark. Miss Grayson is presently singing in a big supper club called the Latin Quarter, which has a stage entrance, which is why you've got the answer that Miss Grayson does go in a stage entrance. All righty, we'll have uh, another contestant after this word from our sponsor have a final contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Peter? Rapton. <laughs> Peter Kaplan. Mr. Kaplan, where are you from? Patterson, New Jersey, sir. Patterson, New Jersey. Nice to have you with us, Mr. Kaplan, the panel. Panel, Mr. Kaplan. Will you join me over here, sir? You know how we keep score? Yes, sir, I do. Fine, then let's let everybody at home and folks in the audience here know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, Mr. Kaplan is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Mr. Poston. May I ask, uh, may I call you Peter? Yes, sir, you may. All right, Mr. Kaplan. Uh, <laughs> I can't hear so good, Pete. Are, are you, uh, do you deal in services, Pete? Yes, sir, I do. Are these services uh, for both men and women? Yes, sir, they are. Are they services which make both men and women happier as a result of having uh, had them? Yes, sir, they do. Sometimes. <laughs> do people who come to see you, do people come to see you? Yes, sir, they do. <laughs> you may call me sir. <laughs> call me Tom. That's not what mother calls me, but... Uh, do these people come to you voluntarily? Yes, sir. May I ask if you uh, touch the people who come to visit you? No, sir, I do not. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you now, or have you ever been a member of the armed forces? No, no, ma'am. <laughs> Peter, I've got some great news for you. You will be. <laughs> At two down and eight Sergeant to go, Mr. Gable. Like he will be in peacetime, I hope, John. Yes, <laughs> I do that indeed, Martin. Uh, Mr. Kaplan... Forgive me for this question, but you're very Ivy League in your dress. Are you out of school? Right now? For well, for the summer, of course, but I mean in general. Have you graduated from either prep school or university or high school? Well, that covers a lot of ground. We can say that he has. <laughs> yes. Yes, he has. Are you at present a university undergraduate in season? Yes, sir, I am. And... Is the fact that you are uh, still at school in any way related to what you do? No. No, sir, it isn't. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you work out of doors, Mr. Kaplan? Sometimes. Uh, do you wear anything other than what you're wearing now in your job? He's got another suit. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the summer heat, Pete. <laughs> Actually, Pete, we got to flip all the cards because we've run out of time. Peter is a student at Princeton, but he has a weekend and a permanent job in the summer, which is called private detective. Oh. That's the work he does. <clears throat> in fact... I know a Princeton man when I see one. You know a Princeton man is right. He's with the Metropolitan Detective Agency, and congratulations, Pete. Nice Thank to have had you with us, and sorry we didn't have more time. I think you'd have fooled him. Nice to have had you with us, Tom Poston, and until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, good night, Bennett and Phyllis, and good night, dear Tom. Thank you. Good night, Arlene. Good night, John. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Tom. So it was nice so to nice be having here. you. Good night, Martin. Good night, Dorothy.
John, once more, good night. Thank you, all because all the good of you. Thank you, Father. And, also, <laughs> and you too, Bennett. And thank you all too for being as awfully nice of you, all of you, for what's my line. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> if you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. This has been a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton.